So here we're going to look at section 1.6 of my pre-algebra series, adding and subtracting like terms. So here we're going to talk about again just some how to simplify and do some arithmetic involving when we have expressions involving variables. So the first thing that we're going to do is learn how to identify these like terms. And then once we are able to group together our like terms, we'll talk about the arithmetic involved in how we combine those like terms. And I think a lot of this will be relatively intuitive, or at least if you had to take a guess and had no clue. I think for a lot of people, your natural guess would be the correct thing to do. Okay, so the first thing that we want to ask ourselves is, what is a term? We keep talking about terms. So a term is a number or the product of a number and one or more variables raised to a power. So those variables are raised to powers. So as always, maybe it's best just to look at some examples. So here I've got a bunch of terms and they're all separated by a comma. So notice in my very first example, I've just got this number five. There's no variable, but that's fine. You can have just a number that's uh, a term, and it's even got a special name. It's called a constant term because it doesn't change, right? If you've got a variable three times some number, that number is going to change as that variable x changes. But 5, well, 5 is just 5. It's a constant. It doesn't change. So that's called a constant term. And then I've just got some other random examples. So I've got a number multiplied by a variable. I've got the number 5 multiplied by two variables, x and y. Then I've got x times y, but y is raised to the second power. That's fine. You can have negative coefficients and multiple variables. You can have uh, the variables have fraction exponents, negative exponents, decimal exponents. And it looks like the most number of variables that any term has for me is I've got three, uh, three variables. You can have as many variables as you want. And just a little naming convention, typically you'll write things in alphabetical order. So notice, for example, I've got X and Y and Z. That's just good notation and something that's common. So I encourage you to do that as well. If you've got a term and there's a bunch of variables, um, alphabetize them because that way it is easier visually to pick out like terms. Okay, so many expressions will have multiple terms. So for example, in my next example here, I've got the term 2a, uh, 3b, and 4xy. Those are all added together. And as it says, I've got three terms in this case. And this is what's known as a trinomial. In my next example, I've got the term 5. From that, I'm subtracting 2x. To that, I'm adding y to the third. And then I'm subtracting uh, z to the fifth. So in this case, I've got four terms. So the defini a little definition here. So the numerical factor of a term, that's called the numerical coefficient. It's whatever number you see floating around. So let's determine the numerical coefficient. And these are be will be short. So I've got 4xy. Well, the number that's floating around is just 4. So I'll write nc for numerical uh, coefficient. That's going to be equal to 4, so numerical coefficient. And my next one, I've got x times y to the 4th times z to the 5th. I don't see a number, but again, we could multiply that by 1. That doesn't change its value. So its numerical coefficient is equal to 1. And in my last example, I have 12xy. The numerical coefficient there is going to be equal to 12. Do be careful, you know, if somebody wanted to give you a, a tricky question or, I don't know, maybe they could say, what's the numerical coefficient of 4x times 3y? Well, be careful. Don't just say it's 4. Always simplify. So make sure you simplify first. Well, 4 times 3, that would be 12. Then we would have x times y. And we would still have that same numerical coefficient. So the numerical coefficient of 4x times 3y, that numerical coefficient is 12. So again, moral of the story, make sure that things are simplified before you pick out the numerical coefficient. And we said numerical coefficient. I hardly ever hear it called that. People will just usually, at least in my experience, just call it a coefficient. What's the coefficient? What's the coefficient? It's just the number um, that's associated with that term. Okay, so identifying like terms, let's, let's do that. And 
So what we're looking for, and this is kind of my rough definition, so we're looking for terms that contain the same combination of letters raised to powers all multiplied together with some constants. And again, ultimately, we want to simplify them. And all of mine are simplified. Okay, so again, I've got my list of just random terms. Let's group them together. So I've got this constant 5. So that's one of my terms. And now I'm just looking for just a number. Well, 2x, so that's got a variable. So does the next one, variables, variables. Oh, 8.1, that's just a number. So that would be a like term with 5. They're both constants. So let me get rid of that one. And I don't see any other terms that have just numbers. So those two would go together. Those would be like terms. And next, okay, so I see 2 times x. I just want an x to the first power multiplied maybe by some number. So, okay, got y's present in my next term. That doesn't work. The next one doesn't even have an x. Too much stuff. Okay, 18 times x. That's just a number multiplied by an x to the first power. So those go together. Whoops, I didn't want to do that one. Let's do that one. And I don't see any other terms that involved just x. So let's go through these a little faster. So I've got x times y to the third. That takes care of that one. To have any x's, y's to the thirds. Well, this term is close, but it's got an exponent of 2 on the x, and we just need um, x to the first. So x to the first, y to the third. I think this is my other one, where it's being multiplied by 14. So 14x, y to the third. That would be a like term. So that one's gone, and that one's gone. Let's keep going. Next, I've got a yz, namely a 7yz. And I've got another, just 1yz. So let's uh, put that one down. I've got a negative 3yz. So that one will also come along. Those are all like terms. And notice in my last one, I've got a square root of a number, but that's fine. I've got the square root of 19. Again, multiplied by y to the first, z to the first. So that takes care of all those. Last but not least, I think the last two will go together. So I've got x to the second, y to the third. I've got another x to the second, y to the third. Oh, but let's not forget the 22. So I've got x squared, y to the third, and 22 x squared, y to the third. So those will all be my like terms. Okay, combining like terms. So let's look at 4x plus 10x. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, give the punchline. When you have like terms, you just do the arithmetic out front. We would do 4 plus 10 and then attach the x. So I'm saying that this is going to be equal to 4 plus 10, which is 14, and then you just attach the x. And, you know, the way you can think about that, what is 4 times x? Well, that means we have 4 x's being added together, right? x plus x plus x. That's what we mean when we write 4 times x. 4 times x. But then we would add 10 x, right? We would have x plus 1. Do I want to write them all out? I'm not going to write them all out. Let's assume that there are 10 x's here, right? Well, if I take these four and add these 10, x plus x plus x plus x plus x. If I add all of those x's together, what am I going to get? I'm going to get 14x at the end of the day. So that's why it makes sense if you have like terms, you do the arithmetic on the coefficients. So that's why we're picking out, that's why we've been talking about identifying like terms and then the coefficients. Okay, so in my next example here, example A, I see a 4x. But then all of the other terms just involve y. So there's nothing for the 4x to combine with. It's just chilling out all by itself. But I can do the arithmetic on the other three terms. And again, I do it on the coefficients. So I'm going to take positive 10 and add 3. And then I'm going to subtract 1, right? Because that's my coefficient um, on y. So if I do 10 plus 3, that's 13. 13 minus 1 is going to give me positive 12. And again, we just include that variable y. So my next example, I notice, well, there's an x squared and there's an x squared. So again, I do the arithmetic out front. I do negative 5 minus 10. Ne excuse me, I think I said negative 5. So I do, excuse me, um, 
positive 5 minus 10, I was looking at this negative, positive 5 minus 10 is going to give us negative 5 as a solution. And again, I keep that x squared. And let's look at the, the, the next one. I've got a y to the 4th. I've got a y to the 4th. We do the arithmetic with the numbers. So positive 3 plus 12, that's going to be positive 15. And again, y to the 4th power. Notice in my next example, we have 3xy plus 5xy squared. Well, these are not like terms. Right? They're not like terms because they both have an x to the first, which is good. But I've got y to the first, and this has y to the second. And all you need is just one thing to be off, and those are not like terms. So this is already simplified. There's, no, there's nothing to do. And let's see. Let's look at our next one. Our very last one here are these like terms. I've got an x to the first, x to the first, x to the first. So far, so good. I've got y to the third, y to the third, y to the third. And then I've got z to the fourth, z to the fourth, z to the fourth. So again, all I'm really focusing on is I'm doing 18 minus 9 minus 4. That's what I'm thinking about in my head. So 18 minus 9 is going to be 9. So 18 minus 9 is 9. 9 minus 4 is positive 5. And then, let's see, I just again include the variable. x, y to the third, z to the fourth. That would now be my simplification. Okay, so let's do a few more examples here, and then I think that'll finish us off. So we'll go through these a little bit faster now. So com let's combine the like terms. I've got 4m plus 5m. Those are like terms. If I do the 4 plus the 5, that's just going to be 9m. So r to the third, s squared. I've got r to the third. I've got s squared. Perfect. I can simply do 17 minus 12. 17 minus 12 is going to leave us with 5 of those. So 5r to the third, s squared. Let's see, in my next one, I think we had an example similar to this. They're not all like terms, but I've got an a squared and an a squared. Well, if I do the arithmetic, 4 minus 7. 4 minus 7 is negative 3. Again, I just attach on my a to the second power. And now I play this game one more time. I've got an a and an a. Let's do the arithmetic. I've got positive 13 plus 17. 13 plus, if I've got 13 a's and another 17 a's, well then I've got 30 a's hanging out. So let's see, I see a p to the second and a p to the second. Those are like terms. 5 plus 7 is 12. Let's see, I've got a term involving p, a term involving p. So I've got 4p plus 8p, that's going to be positive 12p. And lastly, I've got positive 18 minus 4. That's going to leave me with positive 14. So here I've got a triangle, and we've got the side lengths of 2x, 3x plus 4, and then 6x squared minus 5x plus 1. We want to find an expression for its perimeter. So I'm going to write the perimeter as p. And recall that the perimeter is just the distance around an object. So we're just going to have to add those side lengths together. 2x plus, I'm going to put this in parentheses um, just because it's better notation. Of course, perimeter, we add them together. But for some reason, suppose you had you weren't dealing with perimeter, you were dealing with something else, and maybe you had to subtract some side lengths. You would want to have parentheses because we would need to distribute that negative. So again, when in doubt, put things in parentheses. Well, I could distribute. Um, I could think there's a positive 1 and a positive 1, and that's just going to get rid of the parentheses. So in this case, okay, we could have gotten away without writing parentheses, but it never hurts to put it in there. So let's combine our like terms. I see a 2x plus a 3x minus a 5x. Well, 2x plus 3x is 5x minus 5x. That's going to give us 0x. Well, 0 times anything is 0, so we're just going to admit, omit it. We're not going to write anything. Uh, we'll just leave that out of there. So next we've got uh, 4 plus 1, which is 5. So 5, and then we would just be left with a positive 6x squared. So that would be the perimeter. 
Notice 5x minus 2x, we could write plus 0x, but plus 0x is just plus 0. And again, that expression, 5 plus 6x squared plus 0, would be the same thing if we just write 5 plus 6x squared. So that would be an expression for our perimeter, just knowing x. Um, last but not least, got a little smushed here. So the cost of producing x units of an item is given by the cost equals 200 plus 25x. And the revenue for, I wrote for sell, let's write for selling. Let's try to use some good English here. For selling x items is given by r equals 80x minus x squared. And the profit is given by the revenue... <laughs> the revenue minus the cost. Let's find the expression that represents profit. So we said that profit, the profit is revenue minus cost. Well, we have expressions for revenue. The revenue we said is 80x minus x squared. So that's just this portion. Minus the cost, and the cost was 200 plus 25x. Right, that's the cost. And now the same thing. We just want to combine our like terms. And this actually goes with my example earlier, where I said make sure to put things in parentheses. When we did the perimeter, right, everything was just being added together. So the parentheses ended up being, uh, in a sense, unnecessary. But notice now I'm taking revenue minus cost. So we're going to have to be a little more careful when we simplify. So I don't see a number. I could pretend there's a negative one. So we'll have to distribute. Likewise here, I could pretend there's a positive one. Well, one times anything, you just get it, uh, what, what you're multiplying the one by. So in this case, we'll just get 80x minus x squared. But now I need to distribute negative one. So negative one times positive 200 is negative 200. Negative one times positive 25x. A negative times a positive is a negative. So we'll have negative 25 times x. Let's see, the only like terms I see here are 80x, and I'm subtracting away 25x. So let's see, 80 minus 25, that looks like 55x. And then the others I'm just left with, negative x squared minus 200. So this is certainly correct. I talked about earlier when you write terms, Typically, we'll write them in alphabetical order, right? So I have my x, my y, and then my z in this example here. When we write expressions or equations, typically what we'll do is we'll write them in descending power. And we'll talk about this a little bit further on. So this is certainly correct. You might see it rewritten. So notice I've got an x to the power of 2. That's the highest power. So I'm going to write my negative x squared first. Then I've got my 55x to the first, and notice that's a really positive 55. So I can write plus 55x, and then I've got my minus 200, my constant. So I'm going to write my profit in that, uh, in that form. Again, they're both equivalent, both the same thing, but typically you will start seeing things written from highest power to what's known as the lowest power. Um, again, looking at this exponent, so why not? Let's go ahead and just start talking about it now. So, okay, I hope these examples make some sense and help a little bit. And yeah, that's all there is to it.